Gentlemen, this country of ours is unique in one very important respect. We're the only nation in the world where practically every family has its own transportation system. Here in America, there's an automobile for every four and a half feet. And every car and truck you see on the road was put there by some salesman. The automobile business offered a great opportunity for salesmen in the past, and because car buyers have been so well satisfied with this method of individual transportation, the selling of automobiles offers a still greater opportunity to salesmen today. But the fact that practically every family already has an automobile puts the new car salesman into the trading business. A salesman's job today is to trade the prospect out of his old car or truck and put him in a new one. That's why every Ford salesman must be skilled in trading techniques. And now, gentlemen, we're going to break up this meeting with the usual closing thought. The Ford salesman's biggest investment is his time. Make the most of it. OK, boys, let's bring in some deals. Herb, uh, Herb Porter and uh, Joe would like to talk to you two a minute. Herb, one of the best ways for a new man to get started in this business of selling cars and trucks is to spend a little time with someone who knows all the angles. Now, Joe Thorne here is a good man to show you the ins and outs of the business. Joe, I'd like to have you take Herb with you for a few days, see how you do things. Is that all right with the both of you? Sure. You bet it is, Mr. Fuller. OK, then, the best of luck to you, Herb. And did you have good luck, Herb? Well, Charlotte, that's something you can't just answer with a yes or a no. A lot of things happened, and... Tell me about them, Herb. Well, it's a long-winded story, but... Anyhow, we went for a ride in Joe's demonstrator. Uh, Mr. Thorne, Joe. It's Joe, Herb. OK, Joe. I was wondering, I... I understand you're at or near the top in sales every month. So that means you must do things a lot different, huh? No, I don't think so, Herb. Maybe it's just that I do more of the same things. You see, it's like Mr. Fuller says. Time's my greatest investment. And, well, I hope this doesn't sound stuffy, but I try to make the most out of every minute. But I had the idea cars were always sold in the showroom. Uh-uh. Some of them are, but most of them are sold by going out after the customers. Hey, there's Dick Jones. Hey, Dick. Got anything for me today, Dick? Yeah, Joe, I sure have. I was going to give you a call. Uh, get in touch with Bert Jasper, 1040 Gladstone. He's got a 46 Ford four-door, and he looks hot. OK, thanks a lot, Dick. Thanks to you for that check you sent me last week. I'll keep sniffing. So long, Joe. So long, Dick. What's all that about, Joe? Well, Dick's one of my bird dogs. He's good for three or four hot tips a month. Bird dog? Yeah, guys who tip me off when somebody's thinking about buying a car. How many of these bird dogs do you have? Oh, maybe 10 or 15 with five or six I can depend on. Are they all salesmen like Dick? Oh, no. No, you might find a good bird dog almost any place. One of my best ones is a barber. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hello, Joe. No, no, I'm not too busy. Yeah, I got one yesterday. A 47 Pontiac convertible. Uh-huh. Yeah, the license number is... Uh, BR3728. Yeah, sure, Joe. So long. Another good one runs an independent garage. He buys a lot of parts from us. Hiya, Mike. What do you know today? Not much I'm going to let you in on, Joe Thorne. <laughs> I'll be satisfied if you just tell me who's thinking about buying a new car. Oh, that much I'll do. Customer in here yesterday got his 1946 Ford Coupe fixed up so he could make a better deal on a trade-in. Oh, here it is. Name's Alec Latimer, 230 Forest Avenue. Uh -huh. OK, much obliged, Mike. I'll get right on that. See you later. I'm sure of that. So long. And besides those, I've got another good bird dog who's a car washer and one who works in a gas station. And look what we have here. Good morning, sir. My name's Joe Thorne. I'm with Jack Swift, Ford dealer. 
We've got a buyer for a car like yours, but I've got to move fast. If I can get you more than it's worth, will you trade today? When I want to buy a new car, I'll know what to do about it. Very well, sir. Here's my card. If I can help you, let me know. Bye. Bye. It didn't work so good, did it? Well, maybe not, maybe so. He's got an idea he didn't have before. I might hear from him later. Anyhow, the more you tackle, the more you get. Only time I can sell anything is when I've got a possible customer standing right in front of me. So I ask a lot of people to buy. Oh, there's another one. Morning, sir. My name's Joe Thorne. I'm with Jack Swift, Ford dealer. Yeah? We need a model like yours to balance our used car stock. If I can get you a real good deal on a new Ford, would you trade today? Mm, uh, what's your offer? Oh, what do you think it's worth? <laughs> Look, this was your idea. It's up to you to supply the figure. All right. According to the prices in today's paper, your car is worth around $1,000, Mr. Uh... Uh, a bullet. Yeah, but keep talking. You said you'd give me uh, more than it's worth. And I will, too. How much will it take, Mr. Bullock? Every cent I can get. And that'll come to just about $1,200. I think I can get it through for you at eleven hundred. Nope, nope. Twelve hundred dollars and no deal. Well, maybe I can get it for you. Suppose you let me take your car over to our place to see what I can do. Well, what am I going to do for a car? Well, you can use mine, Mr. Bullard. Give you a chance to feel the difference. Okay, I'll do that. Can you come in around two o'clock, Mr. Bullard? Yeah, yeah, I think so. See, Herb, that'll do two things. Bullard will come into the showroom because we've got his old car, and he'll get a good selling on Ford by driving it. That's why I always keep my demonstrator in good shape. Clean, lubricated, top running condition. It's a good idea. You going back to the showroom now, Joe? No, we've got an appointment at the Thaler Nursery. Mr. Thaler's in the market for a ton and a half steak truck. You sell trucks too? Sure, I sell trucks. <laughs> That's the beauty of our job. We're not limited in this dealership to passenger cars. We can also sell trucks. Matter of fact, I've got quite a few fleet customers. You know, businessmen who buy both passenger cars and trucks from me. <laughs> Believe me, that builds up the old paycheck. Yes, I suppose it does. I thought you almost had to be an engineer to sell trucks. Oh, no. Well, of course, now and again, you get into a deal where you have to figure, well, special equipment, weight distribution, that sort of thing. But in cases like that, I just call on the truck specialist or the sales manager to give me a lift. But most of the time, especially on pickups and panels and stakes, the customer has a pretty good idea what he wants. And it's usually just a matter of getting together on price. This is a trading business in trucks, just as it is in passenger cars. But how do you find prospects for trucks? Well, that's sometimes easier than it is to find prospects for passenger cars. The logical place to look, of course, is among people who use trucks. Oh, uh, this little folder comes in mighty handy when you want to sell a truck shows the kinds of trucks that are used by different businesses. Yeah, this looks all right. Incidentally, do you ever make any cold approaches on truck prospects? Oh, sure thing. Tell me, Joe, the way you go up to strangers and start trading with them, doesn't that take a lot of nerve? <laughs> no, not after you get used to it. You gotta look at it this way, Herb. Practically everybody would rather be driving a new car or truck than the one they're driving now. So you're doing them a favor when you show them how they can buy one. Well, here we are. We're ready to give you an attractive trade-in allowance, Mr. Thaler, because it'd mean a lot to us in advertising to get you into a new Ford truck. How much would you give? We'll put you into a new ton-and-a-half Ford. We'll take your old Chevy as a down payment, and your payments will come to only sixty-five ten a month for 24 months. How much allowance is that? That's an allowance of $625. Uh-huh. That's just about what the Chevrolet man said. And I've always been satisfied with my Chevrolets. You do a lot of your own driving, don't you, Mr. Thaler? Yeah, most of it. Then the additional comforts you get in a Ford truck will be interesting to you. Our cabs have all the comforts you expect in a passenger car. For example, the Ford truck has a thick, springy, rubberized hair padding that can't mat down or pull apart. And besides these advantages in driver comfort, safety, and convenience, 
you got the ruggedness for long life that Ford's always been noted for. Compare the clutches, for example. The Ford truck clutch has 20% more facing friction area than the Chevy. That gives you a good idea of the general overall difference between the two. The figures I quoted you, Mr. Thaler, are on the six-cylinder engine. But for those long, high-speed hauls of yours into the city, what you really need is an eight. Chevy doesn't make an eight. Ford gives you a more flexible choice of power plant. Now, here's something else I'd like you to notice. Think you did any good there, Joe? Yeah, I do. I'm sure of one thing, though, you can't hurry a man like Thaler. He'll think over what I told him, and he'll study that catalog. And of course, uh, I'm going to keep in touch with him. Where'd you get all that dope about trucks? I'll show you when we get back to the office. There you are, Herb. The dope about trucks. The data book, truck selector, and all the rest of it. Look it over if you want to, while I go see what it'll cost to get Bullard's 46 Chevy fixed up for the used car lot. Okay, Joe. Well, looks like we can swing a deal with Bullard if you'll go for a four-door. Boss okay? Boss won't know anything about it. Not until Bullard signs the order. Kind of sure of yourself, aren't you? Oh, I miss sometimes. Calling that prospect Dick gave me. Who's Dick? The bird dog we met on the street this morning. Hello, Miss Jasper. This is Joe Thorne with Jack Swift, the Ford dealer. I understand you and Mr. Jasper are thinking about buying a new Ford. <laughs> that news certainly does get around, doesn't it? Well, I called to tell you that we have a customer for a model just like yours, and we can make you a very attractive trade-in allowance on a new Ford. If I can come over and talk to... Oh. Well, when will he be back in town? I see. All right, then I'll call you on Friday. Thanks very much. Goodbye. Is that another prospect? Yeah, this is a competitive owner. I try to call at least five every day. Hello, Mr. Freetag. This is Joe Thorne with Jack Swift. Oh, you did? Well, I should have been more on my toes, shouldn't I? <laughs> well, it won't happen again. All right, I'll call you back in about 11 months. Yeah. Oh, but uh, bring your new car in for service anyhow, will you, Mr. Freetag? All right, thanks a lot. Bye. Oh, sure, Mr. Charters, Plymouth's a good car. But the new Ford's got a lot of features you don't get in the Plymouth. Yeah. Well, you don't want to do anything until you at least drive the new Ford. I'll stop by your house tonight about 8 o'clock. OK? Fine. Thanks a lot. I'll see you this evening. Well, that takes care of the competitive calls. Let's go get some nourishment. That sounds interesting, too. I was wondering if you two ever thought about food. Oh, sure. We're almost human. We spent the biggest part of a half hour at lunch. Then we went out the back door to the restaurant parking lot. What are you doing now, Joe? Part of my advertising campaign. I put out about 10 of these cards a day on the best cars during my lunch hour. 10 a day, that's 60 a week. If all those cars come in, They you don't, though, Herb. Only about one in 10 ever shows up. What's that, fellow? See what I mean? But I pick up a lot of good deals that way. Oh, come on, let's get the rest of our advertising out and go back to the showroom. Oh, there's one from my list. What, what? License number, that 46 Plymouth going there. Come on inside and I'll show you what I do with them. Hello, Miss Moore. Hello, Mr. Thorne. Will you look up some license numbers for me? Certainly. Miss Moore finds a lot of good prospects for me in license numbers. Well, here's one I didn't find for you, Mr. Thorne. This man called while you were out. He wants to know about that demonstrator you advertised. Oh, yeah, thanks a lot. Oh, and Mr. Buller's waiting for you in one of the closing rooms. Well, oh, thanks again. It's the four-door you want, isn't it, Mr. Bullard? That's right. And you'll want the radio, the heater, white sidewall tires, and the overdrive. Overdrive? Oh, I hadn't given any thought to that. Well, that's a feature that'll pay for itself and the gas it saves, Mr. Bullard. Let's see, you live in uh, Claremont, don't you? Uh-huh. That's about 40 miles a day, round trip. With the overdrive, you'll see a big difference in the amount of gas you use. Hmm. Uh, how much does it cost? It'll only add $4.50 to your monthly payments, Mr. Bullard. Well, okay. 
All right, let's see. That brings your payments to forty-five fifty-five a month. If you'll just okay this offer, we'll see what the boss has to say about it. Yes, sir. That's a good deal, Joe. If they were all that clean, I'd be a much happier man. By the way, how's our new man, Herb, getting along? Well, there's the Buller deal, Herb. They all that easy, Joe? Uh-huh. But I get my share of them. Now I gotta sell Bullard's old car. Still got time to get this ad in tomorrow's paper. You see, Herb, Bullard's car belongs to me for 48 hours. After that, anybody can sell it. Anyway, the sooner I sell it, the more I make. Because that price is gonna go in just one direction. And that's down. I get it. I've been meaning to ask you, Joe, about these newspaper ads you run. They really pay off, huh? Oh, sure. Being in business for myself, I've got to run personal ads. Hey, that reminds me. That call Miss Moore gave me. Yeah, here it is. You want to see the ad that brought it in? Hello, Mr. Faulkner. This is Joe Thorne. You called me about my Ford four-door. Yeah, what kind of car do you have? Yeah. Well, we ought to be able to make you a very attractive offer, Mr. Faulkner. Well, I can't tell you that until I see your car. When can you come in? All right, fine. I'll see you then. OK, goodbye. Now, I got this ad off to the newspaper. We've still got time for some more cold approaches. OK, Herb? OK, Joe. Let's go. And so we spent the rest of Monday and the early part of the evening making more cold approaches. I told you it'd be long-winded, Charlotte, but that's a story. It wasn't long-winded at all. It's very interesting. Did you do the same thing on Tuesday and today? Yes, we did. The same things and more. We made a lot more cold approaches, got in touch with more bird dogs, called some more competitive owners, picked up a few more license numbers, and put out some more if-I-could-would-you card. And then yesterday, when Joe was on floor duty, I got a chance to see the difference in handling prospects you go out after and those who walk into the showroom. These people, the Armstrongs, like almost everybody else who drops in, were only interested in how much they could get for their old car. But instead of making them a high action offer the way he did with Bullard, Joe came in with a low action offer. I'd say that car was worth around, oh, $875. What? You're crazy. That's what your car's worth on the market, Mr. Armstrong. Here are some prices in today's paper uh, on models like yours. So Joe quoted him the market figures, and the Armstrongs acted very unhappy. In fact, Mr. Armstrong made it plain he wanted $150 over the market to make a deal out of it. But that didn't bother Joe. He just made a note of the $1,025 and began selling the new car and as many accessories as he could so the deal would get closer to a reasonable figure. Then Joe got him into a pretty good humor by spending a few minutes with the showroom demonstration kit, hitting the features he knew Mrs. Armstrong would like. Oh, it is beautiful. They agreed that they wanted a four-door with white sidewalls, a heater, a radio, and seat covers, with Joe making notes on all this. And you want the regular time payments to cover the balance, Mr. Armstrong? Yeah. You know, uh, that allowance on your old car is pretty steep. But if you'll okay this... Hold on there. You haven't agreed to my terms. Well, these are your terms, Mr. Armstrong. But I'll do my best to get the boss to go for them. Uh, he'd better. I watched the Armstrongs while Joe was checking the price, and they acted like a couple of kids. He was bragging like he'd bought the Fort Knox gold for a counterfeit slug, and she was cooking up the story she was going to tell all her friends and relatives. That Ford was practically in their garage when, bang, Joe came back. Everything all right? Boss wants to know if I'm out of my head talking about $150 over market value. The deal is off? Oh, dear. No, he'll play along with us. He'll give you $100 over market value on this car with overdrive. On that basis, he might consider it. Might? Well, that's what he said. I think I can swing it with him. And so Joe sold the overdrive hard before the Armstrong story came to a happy ending. They got a good deal, Jack Swift made a profit, Joe Thorne made a sale, and I... Yes, dear? 
Well, I learned something. I learned the difference in handling prospects you go out after, like on cold approaches and putting if I could would you cards on their windshields. That kind you make a high action offer to to get them interested. But the walk-ins, you make them a low action offer so you can go up while they're coming down. But Herb, is that fair? To offer a low price to one and a high price to another? Well, that's just the point, honey. You see, customers are good traders, too. They're always after the best deal they can get. And we always give them the best deal we can. In fact, they frequently end up getting more money than their old cars are really worth. But you've got to know the market value of used cars. And you get that from watching the newspapers and checking the used car lots. I think you're really going to have fun selling Fords, Herb. You certainly weren't this enthusiastic on your other job. Darling, if I could, would you? Why, what do you mean, Herb? If I could make a good living selling Ford cars, would you marry me? Of course, darling. I told you as soon as you found a job you were happy with, I would. This is the best offer I've had today. It's the best deal in town. Thank you.